Hello beautiful people, hello world, my name is Yola. And in today's video, I'm going to utilize this space to get a lot of things off my chest because I have been journaling for a very long time of about five months now. It is February, I believe today is the fifth, and my mind is upset and I need somewhere to talk about it so the way that I feel right now I would describe as wanting to fight and wanting to go out guns blazing at everyone and I don't mean that in a literal sense I mean that in a figurative sense as in I want to address the Bible I want to address heterosexuality I want to address church i want to address the patriarchy i want to address the systems that have been in place for so long that some people continue to stand by without acknowledging the ramifications and the problems that they are causing others i want to talk about freedom and evolution and the direction that I believe that the world is going for our better and how at times I feel so alone and when I say alone I don't mean like I'm the only one who has the thoughts that I have or who has experienced what I experience I mean alone as in right now in this current stage of life where I am meeting new people and adapting new friendships and starting over. I have not yet created and found my solid foundation of people who allow me to feel safe, heard, and seen. As a matter of fact, I feel as though I can only count on one hand the people of which I feel are safe enough for me to be myself fully around. And that's not to say that I want to be completely open and vulnerable with everyone. I'm not that girl, never have been. I would just like to at least have you know, 10 to 15 people who I can be that way with in real life. For those who don't know me and never see me, I'm queer. I'm queer as fuck. I've been queer my entire life and I've been on a very long journey with my sexuality. And I'm in a space where I feel most comfortable standing under the title of queer. Honestly, I feel like other people's curiosity about my sexuality as in what it is that I do in my bedroom is so weird like it's the weirdest thing ever and I've always thought it was weird even in high school when people would like question me and be like you're kind of fruity or you're a little sauce or are you sure you're not a lesbian I would shoot them down and say no 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 because at that time I wasn't in this space to like grass sexuality let alone sex like I wasn't interested in putting my body on other people's bodies like that's just like for what because growing up I was often taught about heterosexuality and you know having children and from the age of about 10 to 13 I had reached a sound conclusion within myself which is I do not want to have children right I had assessed my household how I felt as a child and I had come to the conclusion that you know what if I'm gonna turn out like my parents if I am going to stretch my body to bring in life and do all this work and then have to put more work in raising another human being and teaching them and all of these things I was just like, how about I just take that off the list of things that I 
I do in this life. Like, how about I just not do that? Because it just is too much work in my mental space. Like, literally, ever since I took that, the idea of procreation off of my list of future goals, I've started to shift my view because now it's like, okay, you don't need a man because you don't plan to have children, right? So then I started to think like, you know, I dated men. I kept thinking to myself like, it doesn't feel like I want to be with this man. I started having thoughts to myself like, do I like this man or why am I with this man? And if I am to just give a quick story on the one boyfriend that I've had in my life, the only reason I ever dated him is because of the people that I had around me, right? I had women friends around me who were heterosexual. So the moment that a man asks me out and he is attractive enough, right? They're like, oh my gosh, it's about time. Like, you're an adult now. We have never seen you with a man. Like, you must date him. Like, yes, right? Mind you, when that man asked me out, my first answer in my brain was no. And I told his ass, no. No, thank you. I think that was like his first rejection because then it started to bring about like, is it because of how I look? Or like, what is it? Like, I know I'm handsome, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm looking at you with my eyes too. Like, I see that you're handsome and it's not that. It's just that I don't see a future with you right because first of all i was younger than i am now and i just couldn't see what our life would look like right because i had asked this man like do you want children and he's like yeah and he's like and i see you being their mom but i already know and i've already stated to this man i don't want children so how are you seeing me being something that i don't see myself being does that mean you're gonna force me and coerce me and if that's the case i don't want any parts and I don't want to see that future that you're envisioning unravel. I don't. So anyways, that relationship ended. It ended for various reasons, but it didn't even need to start. It didn't even make a year. It ended, and that was the first and last time, right? But after that, I continued to date men. You know, I had my moments with men, right? Because men are attractive beings, right? But what would happen with me is there's something about heterosexual men that I feel, me, I feel that their perspective is so limited. Like, if the man is heterosexual and then he doesn't love queer people, his perspective is even smaller than the heterosexual man who can love and accept queer people for who they are and still maintain his preference of heterosexuality and wanting to be with a woman and wanting to have a family, right? So, with the way that I, I think, I started to like dissect that further and then when I would talk to men, that's the first question that would come up. It's like, hey, I know you see I'm attractive. I think you're attractive. You're wanting a relationship or something of the sort with me how do you feel about gay people like that's what i want to know i wanted to know are you a part of the portion of men that have a wider perspective than the average or are you a person that i will not be engaging with my point is it's been years and when i say years i mean at least four to five years of me going through this pattern of searching through the the population of men to try to find specific group of them where i would then feel like this could potentially work out for me like this could be my future right my point is i have reached a point where it's just like men have been shoving men into my face like if i talk to a man a man is telling me oh you should have a husband or why don't you have a husband you know and as a woman in my 20s it's tiring and annoying to encounter men younger than me to my grandfather's age if he was alive who are all 
wanting to possess me, for lack of a better word. They want to lock me down, marry me, some way, somehow, have me take care of them. I'm not interested in that. I never have been. Recently, in my reality, I have been introduced to new men in the realm of church. And in that space, I have been keeping my ear open and keeping my business private in the sense of my sexuality and the fact that my perspective is the broadest perspective possible because love is love. And I believe that if you can understand the fundamental simplicity of the fact that love is love and that it is beautiful for someone to love another person, to build with another person, to be happy and glowing and blissful in this, as many people know, as short human life that we all live. What I have realized is that queer people, we think broader and deeper than the average person. And I don't know how to explain that, but as I run into more queer people, I feel like I make more sense. And I feel like I'm allowed to love. And I don't just mean like romantically love as in your relationship. I mean love like I want to hug and kiss my friends on the cheek and you know like cuddle with my friends. I want to love the people who love me and who are dear to me. And in order for me to do that, you have to also want that. Meaning that we have to align in that level and yet I have met heterosexual women who are okay with hugging and kissing each other on the cheeks and cuddling together and crying together and all of that. But then I've met heterosexual women who are like, that's too much. Like that's supposed to be between me and my man. Like that's the only way that that's supposed to happen or that can only happen between like me and my mom, like me and my sister, like you're my friend. And it's like, love is love. Like if I love you, you are like a sister to me. At least that's how I see it, right? Because as time goes on and we build this bond, you're no longer just any person to me. You are like family. And I don't just put anybody under the title of family, especially quickly, but what I'm saying is that's the path that I tend to want to move towards is I want my friends to eventually become my family. Like, if that's not what we're building towards, then what are we doing is what I'm thinking. One of the men that I have met in church. I met this man maybe like four times in the past three to four months. Like we really don't meet. When I do and we have conversations, I'm often listening to like his perspective and like who he is and how he sees things. And one of the days I remember him saying like, oh, there once was a lesbian couple who came to my church. And he was just like, I'm open to people being true to themselves. They were welcomed and He's like, they might have come to two services and I haven't seen them since, but you know, I wish them all the best. And when I heard him include that in his conversation, a part of me was wondering if he included it to like feel me out to see where I am. Cause never once have I stated that I'm interested in men, let alone that I would want to marry a man. I have said that I don't really like men. I definitely have said that. <laughs> I don't mean that like all men, definitely not. Because queer men, I feel like are a different caliber of men, a different category of men. And they have something about themselves that I find to be absolutely beautiful, absolutely intriguing, you know, especially with them being true to themselves, regardless of how that is reflected on the outside, you know? Some men who are queer are masculine. Some men who are queer are more flamboyant or feminine presenting. And I love it all, right? I love as long as you're true to yourself and I love even more men who are queer who love women. Not that they love us as in you want to be with us, you want to be like us. No, you love us as in you understand that you came from a woman, everybody came from a woman. Women are the creme de la creme for lack of a better word. And because of that, you have a way in which you operate this world and the way in which you show up that I just am like, wow, you know, like if I were to 
ever be with the gender under which men are (laughs) if I were to ever be with a man it would most likely be a queer man who loves women right and who wouldn't mind being loved by a woman in all ways like like I said again love is love and in my mind I don't want to get too vulnerable and too deep and start you know sharing how I see things on the internet because I'm not here to be judged more than what it is that I'm putting out. There's so many things that I think in my mind and so many things that I see in my mind and so many things that I'm attracted to that it's like all these barriers in this world that people have, all these these rules are just like like they're so annoying to me and what I realized is those who have rules and barriers that would prevent me from being myself with them can't be my people and it's not to say that they can't evolve beyond those barriers in time and become a person that I, I love and that I, I share knowledge with and so on and so forth but my point is as the whole person that i am now part of me is very tired of meeting heterosexual people that's it and i don't mean meeting them as in dating them i just mean it meeting them in general there's like this way in which their mind is set where they could only see this much of the world and no matter how i try to like help them expand their mindsets, their visuals, their perspective in order to see the whole world, it's just like, it's exhausting. <laughs> and it's not worth it to me. I, I feel like it, it kind of results in me feeling like I'm being beaten down into the ground or like they feel comfortable enough to beat others who are queer down. And then they'll be like, oh, but not you. And it's like, no me too because i am a part of that group i am like yesterday i was hanging out with a different male friend that i I recently made and he believes in the bible and he reads the bible he has you know he has certain scriptures that he has remembered and recalls and he loves women and this man talks about women so much and i've never once even tried to ask him about men because it would just be absolutely appalling and i'm not here to listen to the retort that heterosexual people have about queerness yeah he was just talking about the bible he kept talking about adam and eve adam and eve adam and eve and it was to the point where i just felt like this man was shoving the bible down my throat and i just i couldn't be around him without speaking my truth and i realized i had never once told him that like I'm queer like I don't necessarily see myself marrying a man I gave that that vision up I probably never really had the vision I was actually trying to force it to fit but in my adulthood recently and when I say recently I mean within the past year I've given that vision up to open up my perspective to open up my field of receptivity meaning my ability to receive what is actually meant for me my ability to receive love and the goodness for me and my happiness so that i don't live a life of loneliness and of sadness and misery or a life where i feel as though suicide is a good option and i feel like when whoo that's kind of deep and i feel like the moment you bring death into a situation and you emphasize the fact that you know yourself and you love yourself and you're open to love in whatever form it comes because you would rather live a life of happiness and love than a life of pretend and despair then it seems as though more people are willing to understand you in a sense and accept you but yeah I basically told my friend I was like you know 
I don't see myself with a man. I'm tired of hearing you, you know, talk about your heterosexual dreams because I don't relate. And I'm just, I'm, I'm personally tired of heterosexuality because it's all around. It's, it's like, I see it every day. I walk outside my house and the first thing I see is heterosexuality. Or I see a lot of single men in the country that I live in. And the reason that they're single is because, you know, women don't want them for whatever reason. And I don't blame the women, but because of that, what happens is they then feel this loneliness which results in them wanting to talk to younger women or any woman that would listen to them, which then brings me into the picture where a lot of men that talk to me, of course, it's because I am attractive, first of all. A lot of men that I've met are very shallow, so if you're not even attractive, they're not even going to talk to you. Oftentimes. The conversation starts off, you're so beautiful, blah, 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 do you have a husband? And then it moves on to, oh, I, I got divorced, or I've been single for X amount of years. I would love a woman like you, and blah, 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 and all that they expect. And I'm like, I'm not even interested. I'm not. So imagine somebody experiencing that on a day-to-day -day basis, and then it's like, that's not even what I want for myself. I feel like nobody asks me what I want. And it's like, it's because I don't care. And I had to learn to accept that people really don't care about what I want. They care about what they want. When I told my friend, like, you know, I see myself having a wife. I'm done playing this game of, oh, I might want a husband, da 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 da. Like, I actually think I just. I want to have a wife and I want to, you know, build with my wife. And if me and my wife don't work out, then I might take a break from relationships because I believe that I will only marry a woman. So, yeah, if our marriage is to end, I see myself taking a break to love on myself and to just be a single woman living this life, traveling, exploring, growing in all ways possible, and then I may marry another woman. Yeah. There's so many things that I want to discuss about heterosexuality that, like, I just don't like. There's so many other things I just don't like about men from, like, their aroma. No offense. A lot of men's natural aroma is repulsive to me. The, the aroma of sweat and like must and like, and it's, it's not to say that a man can't smell great because I smell phenomenal men and every time I do, I will give that man a compliment because it's like aroma is so important to me that I've realized in my life so far that on average, 80% of the time, if a man doesn't smell good to me, I don't even want to, like, I don't even want to look at you. I don't care how handsome you are. You don't smell good, I literally, like, ill. Like, and it's not to say that you didn't take a shower. It's not to say that you're not using a good soap. It's not to say you're not using a good cologne. It's just to say that you don't smell good to me, period, and I'm not attracted to your aroma, and I don't want you around me at all because it's just like, oh, and that's just me. And it could be, you know, because I am on so many other spectrums mentally. Neurodivergent area of life, that's where I operate. So, yeah, like, stuff like that matters to me. I feel like I've met a lot of men and lack of cleansiness in your daily life, in your household structure and all of that is just so, like, disgusting and unattractive to me. It is. And that's not to say that I'm the neatest person in the world, but it is to say that, like, I value cleansiness on the ba basic level. Like, if I come to your house, I expect you to have soap, and I expect you to have towels, and, you know, like, things to show that you're taking care of yourself and that you could potentially take care of a guest if somebody were to randomly arrive. And forgive me if that's like judgmental but that's my my expectation right and more often than not i feel like women are automatically prepared for guests to pop up they're prepared with extra they have the soap they have the hair wash they have the 
the I have been taking care of myself stuff, but when I go to some men's house, they don't even got toothpaste. Talking about some, I just ran out of toothpaste. How long did you run out of it? Why you don't got a backup toothbrush? Right? Where is your rag? Right? Why is your tub dirty? Why is your toilet dirty? Don't you use this every day? Like, why, why haven't you taken care of your space and made it a space that's comfortable for you? Not even for me. I will come to your home and I will sit with you in your home, right? And oftentimes what, what happens is I will come to somebody's home because they invited me and then they themselves will tell me, oh, I'm so sorry for the mess. I'm so sorry. And I don't want you to have to apologize to me. I don't, and I'm not saying that just men apologize. Women apologize too, but like, I feel like in a way women apologize because we are expected to maintain this high standard and majority of the time when I go to women's houses and they're apologizing I'm like uh, girl what are you apologizing for you're apologizing because you didn't like a, a little candle you're apologizing because you didn't take out the trash your floors are freaking clean there's a clean space for me to sit you have extra stuff folded there your tables are clean like your bedroom is clean like girl the little thing that you're nitpicking at i don't give a damn about that's fixable in fact i will help you you know fix the little small two second things but i feel like in men's houses it's not two seconds it's hours of work that needs to be done and then i will say this as well i find it absolutely insulting and absurd when men think it's a joke or funny to ask me for help in their home like the other day i got asked oh can you mop my floors no no the fuck i can't no the fuck i can't i am not gonna come in your house and labor in your house for you to have an environment that is only neat for however long you're gonna keep it that way right like no i'm not that girl recently i actually made a couple of videos where i was going on a rant and i haven't posted them here yet but i probably will post them now that i'm creating this video in those videos i'm basically telling the truth that i don't like to clean and what i said is i don't like to clean but i was raised in a jamaican household so my house is clean i cleaned my entire house like last week and now i'm on a a routine of keeping it that way right because i know i don't like to clean so i don't want everything to become so dirty that i then feel overwhelmed and i have to spend hours cleaning so i've been implementing new habits of cleaning on the way you mess this up today the latest i could clean it is tomorrow right let's say i cook something today tonight i can leave it in the sink right and i don't just leave it in the sink to dry and be crusty i'm gonna put water in it i'm gonna put bleach in it and i'm gonna let it sit that way in the morning all i gotta do is a little doo -doo 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 -doo, and it's clean right and then I, I have it to use again or sometimes if i dirty the dishes right then and there and i still have the energy and i put the little bleach and stuff on it i might go eat the food by the time i come back i'll add the dish that i ate out of into the solution and i'll clean it all and then it's clean like i just have a routine of if my mop gets wet i did talk about this in um older videos in my vlogs if my mop gets wet i don't care what i'm cleaning if i have to wet my mop to clean i'm cleaning everywhere in my house i can call that the wet mop rule meaning if the mop is wet just keep going till all the floors are clean that makes cleaning even easier for me because then it's like oh i just wanted to clean this room but now that this room is clean this room needs time to dry let me go clean the other room keep going and then lo and behold all the floors are clean i keep at it until i get it back to a clean space because that's what i believe i deserve that's another thing too is i realized that it's almost like a value thing to be honest and i like people who value themselves because i value myself so when people come to my house and they're like oh it's so clean da -da -da -da. it's like thank you but i didn't do it for you i don't clean for other people now that doesn't mean that 
if somebody's coming to my house and my house is dirty, that I'm not going to straighten it up because I know they're coming. Of course. But I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for after they leave my house. The environment still is clean for me, for my mental sanity, for my peace, for the fact that I'm alive and I'm here right now. And I refuse to be smelling weird odors because I'm sensitive. Certain odors make me sick to my stomach. And then if I get too sick to my stomach, I do puke whatever's in my stomach. And to some people that could seem dramatic, but it's just taught me that I need to take care of myself. I need to do what I have to do so that I'm not sick. I need to do what I have to do so that I do sleep well at night. I need to do what I have to do so that I do feel well enough to live my life so that my energies are high. Oftentimes, I feel like I relate the best with other women who have a similar mindset, you know, or who experience similar struggles where they're like, I don't really like to clean, da da da, and I'd be like, oh, I don't like to clean either, but I do like to clean my friends' homes. Like, if you're a woman friend, I like to clean women friends' homes because I feel just so connected in cleaning women's homes. It's like, let me help take this burden off of you that society may have been burdening you with since childhood and you've been doing the best you could but you need help i want to help you because i know how it feels to not have help i just feel like i went on a very long rant that i'm probably gonna chop and crop and try to cut down but continuing when I told him about my preference and, you know, the fact that I will have a wife in the very near future, he went on to be like, oh, you know, it's supposed to be Adam and Eve and God is not gonna blah, 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 blah. And then he was like, and I'm not judging you. And I was just like, I don't hate you. I don't hate you at all. I just no longer fuck with you to the extent at which I once did. And... Once you put a judging statement out in the air, you can't counteract it and say, but I'm not judging you. Because I will feel and I will see, right? That statement of, oh, God made Adam and Eve. God made me. God made me. I am here. I am one of eight billion. Now let's go on and get into the Bible. This is something that I've wanted to address for a minute now. I don't understand why, why everybody has been hell bent on this one book that has been here since dust. Who made that book? Everybody gonna be like, God, Jesus. Who wrote that book? King James Version, who wrote it? Who is the writer and author of that book? What is that book about? Oh, it tells you stories. It's about lessons. It's about punishment. It's about what's right, what's wrong. Da, 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 da. The point that I'm trying to get to is the fact that I don't care about the book. Okay? And that doesn't mean that I don't care about God. That's not what I'm saying. And I know that some people don't know how to like differentiate and provide enough detachment from their beliefs and new information but what I'm saying is that just like the patriarchal society that has always been operating people are finally being able to see the faults in the society because everybody or a large amount of the population feels fucked for lack of a better word the oppression and struggle of the economy as everybody seems to be on the verge of homelessness and wars are breaking out and there's fires and famine and all types of stuff are happening and now everybody's like oh my god it's the systems the systems i'm like the same systems that have always been here need to change and the next thing i want to you know get into is religion and the fact that that needs to change now i'm not saying that you need to no longer believe in what you believe in that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you do you and let others do them. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying no longer judge other people for not following the path that you are on. If you believe you are on the right path, then stick to your right path. There are 8 billion of us. 
We cannot all be listening to the same thing. We are not robots. We cannot all be reading the same Bible and having the same exact interpretation. We do not have the same minds. We are all human. Yes, we all have a mind, yet we all have different perspectives. We all have different walks of life. We all have different ways in which we understand and see things. Now, I personally am a teacher of life, a lover of knowledge. So I personally plan to dissect the Bible for my own purposes, right? I've had many people want to tell me, you have to read the Bible, you have to read the Bible, blah, 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 blah. I know that before I die and leave this earth, I will have read the Bible because I am a lover of knowledge and information. So I read the Bible, not because you told me, not because I want to be Christian, not because I plan to go to church, not because God told me. I'm going to read it just because I want to read it because it's a book. Okay. I'm also going to read the Quran. And if I end up reading, what is the other book? There's plenty of other books. I plan to translate other books just to read to see what the knowledge has been put into the book and why people are believing that. That's the path of life that I'm on, is dissection and understanding and finding what connects all of us. Now that I, I ran on that rant about the Bible, God loves me. He loves all of us. If you're a child of God, God loves you, right? He will never forsake you. Right? And right now what I'm saying is things that I have learned because I used to have to go to church all the time and because those around me continue to remind me of what the Bible says. So when I use their own knowledge against them, they're upset. But the Bible says you shouldn't judge other people. Why are y'all judging? The Bible said that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, meaning that as we make our sins, we're immediately forgiven. Why? Because he already died on the cross for them. So when somebody sins or somebody makes a mistake, why are you holding that against them? Why? Can't they be renewed? Can't they be reborn? Aren't they already forgiven? That's what I'm trying to talk about. There is a statement in the Bible that said God is good. There's songs that I often hear too, Bible songs and hymns that say God is good. 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 It didn't say that he's evil. It didn't say that he likes to stab us in the back and, and, and mess with us. It said good. So, if he is good, wouldn't he want our highest good? Wouldn't he want us to be loved? Wouldn't he want us to be true to ourselves? Wouldn't he want us to be at peace in this life? Where we are constantly being attacked by the demons within us, right? The demons of anxiety, the demons of depression, the demons of being bipolar. The list is endless. Life is hard enough. Life is hard enough without all the loud chatter of all these extra rules that are constantly being created out of thin freaking air. You know that we're all going to die, right? So live your life and mind your business. Like, damn, it just makes me feel sad to think that the reason that somebody's shoving that Bible down my throat is because it was shoved down theirs. And now they swallowed it and it's so deeply embedded within them that they don't even know whether or not it's serving them. Some people will tell me, oh, I read the Bible years ago and now I still live by it. Pick it back up again and read it again. And let me know if it's still serving you. Or are you just being served by the goodness of God himself and not necessarily the pages that you don't even recall? There's many people who tell me the way that I'm living life is the way that God has taught me to live life. Then live your life that way. If it's serving you, if you are being blessed by it, then do that. Do that. Because that's what's working for you. That's what you want to do. I never once have thought to tell somebody who reads the Bible, don't read it. I have never once thought to tell somebody who goes to church, don't go to church. I have never thought to tell somebody who gets on their knees and puts their hand in a prayer position and prays up to God to not do that. Never once have I thought that. And yet, when I don't choose to do the same things that they do, oh, 
why don't you go to church? Oh, why don't you worship God? Why aren't you showing us? And why aren't you over here putting on this act for us to see that you are doing what you said you are? And what I said is I'm forming my own relationship with God. Me and God have our own relationship. Right? We have our own relationship. Meaning that I talk to God in my journal. When I'm right there, he hears me. When I'm on my walk and I'm going through my mind and I'm going through life and I'm having all of those thoughts and stuff, he hears me then. Right? When I see somebody who isn't doing well but it touches my heart and I move to help that person, that's God moving through me. Yeah? When I receive blessings and goodness from another person I feel in my heart I want to do all that I can to return the energy that I've received from that person I'll set up a prayer for that person that's me moving that's my relationship with God and I don't need to tell everybody how I operate in my relationship with God in order for them to tell me whether it's right or wrong because who are you to say who are you you ain't God I feel like I've had so much built up in my mind that it's been starting to run me rampant. As in, I've been exhausted because of people in my life. And I don't even have that many people in my life, but I think that what I'm learning right now is that even good people are not good for me. Now, I made a video a long time ago, and I say a long time ago, I mean like last year, no more than two years ago, where I literally titled like, good people could be good but not good for you and I really feel that way like I'm meeting good people but like I'm learning that like you're a good person but like you're not good for me like you just aren't it doesn't mean that I don't want you in my life it doesn't mean that we can't have a relationship it just means that you will receive less time from me than another person might and you can take that how you would like but I have to do what I have to do because you're stressing me out. And I don't want a life of stress. I don't. I don't deserve that. I've already lived so long. I've already experienced so much stress, so many traumas, so many poor experiences that it's time for me to speak up, stand my ground, and to move people into the position where they will best serve me. And if that means you have to be in the background, then so be it. Because just because you're in my background doesn't mean that you're in your background. You should be the main character of your life. And as I'm the main character of my life, I pick and choose where you are placed in it. And unfortunately, some people, their best role is to be in the background. Or they have to get cut off set. No hard feelings. There's eight billions of us. If I'm able to cut you off quicker, then a new person who better aligns with me will show up. They will show up because the space will be vacant for them to then flow in. I've said so much in this video because I really have needed to vent and I saw a video on YouTube that was basically saying, do what you have to do to get it out, whatever it is. And for me, it's frustration, it's lack of understanding, judgmentalness and my perspective. I've just been feeling like God loves me, God loves you, and whoever says that he doesn't because of whatever reason that they're giving you, then they don't know God. Or their perspective is so small of God that they don't believe that he would love everyone. And that to me is just, Wow. Like, who are you to think that you are worthy of love over me? And who are you to judge me and think that by you judging me, you're going to receive more love? That's not how this works. That is not how this works. I feel better now that I've been to it. In closing, I want to say, if you don't got nothing good to say, don't comment on this post because then I'll just close out my comment section entirely. I am definitely that girl. And if you have something good to say or if you're understanding what I've said in this post and you 
want to say like yes girl comment yes girl down below comment you're not alone i feel you comment your story down below if you relate to all that i'm saying right now and as always thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in my next video peace